Winter can be a difficult time of year to try and get clothing systems right and working for you in order to stay comfortable when you're at hiking on the hill or indeed camping. So I'm going to go through three Pile Pertex garments and give you a little bit of an overview of so the pluses and minus points to do with them in terms of wearing them throughout the day, regulating your body temperature and then how to go about using the systems in a camp. Okay, our three jackets. We have a uh, Montan Extreme Smock in the centre. We've got a slightly older version um, of the Rab Vaporize Guide. And then quite a new thing that I've um, discovered, uh, the Jotunar Polar Trek Alpha Pile Pertex. Uh, three completely different garments, um, and I'll give you a quick overview on where you would naturally wear them and the pluses and negatives to do with each one. So, Pile Pertex, it's been around for donkey's years. The Buffalo Systems jacket you'll probably know about, used extensively by militaries all over the world. And the idea behind it is your outer layer is quite a quick drying, uh, windproof, water resistant material. The inside is pile. And it's designed to wick the sweat away from your body, so keeping you dry. So even though these garments aren't waterproof, they dry very, very quickly. The inner material takes moisture from your body, pushes it to the outer where it can then disperse. That technology has been around for quite a while. And the big plus point to any pile pertex kind of garment is the fact that you can sweat in it, wear it all day, you tend not to really overheat in them. They're very versatile items of clothing. Where they fall down perhaps, um, as I said, they're not completely waterproof. So if you are in a downpour or a big snowstorm, you're going to want to put a shell on anyway. Um, and they're not the warmest. A lot of people use these thinking that they can get away without maybe a BLA jacket or some extra insulation. When you do stop moving and you're wet, even though you might feel dry as you're moving and nice and warm in one of these, as soon as you stop, you are going to feel that cold. So it's always a good idea to have a BLA jacket that you can put on in those circumstances. So the Vaporized Guide, this is an alpine style jacket, um, it's a bit on the short side, um, if you are wearing a harness it's probably going to feed out as you're lifting your arms up, if you're just hiking uh, that's not going to be a problem for you. Cut is quite uh, slimline, it's got a couple of hand warmer pockets, these are pretty big, they will just about take an OS map. The dumb pocket on the chest, the Napoleon style pocket, really useful again, that will take an OS map. This particular version, I believe the newer versions as well, have a couple of inside pockets. They're okay. You tend to get things in there a bit wet because the sweat has been wicked away from your body, so you be careful about using those. I tend to just use them for dumping things on the go. It's got an oversized hood, which means it will take a helmet, and it's adjustable like most jackets with the draw cord at the back. A good face coverage if you are caught in some bad weather. And again, the pile runs all the way through the inside of the garment, so the hood will act as a hat and keep your head warm if you're on the move. And it's got a nice brim on it as well, just to keep uh, the brim stiff, so if you are in bad weather, you're not going to get snow, rain, things like that in the face. Um, this particular model's got a couple of pit zips for venting. Um, it's worth mentioning, there are different degrees of thickness with a lot of these garments. This is a, a winter one. Um, you don't necessarily need something this thick. When I was up on uh, the mountain at the weekend and it was minus 30 with the wind chill, and I had this and a base layer on, um, about minus 30 was the point that I started to feel a little bit chilly when I was on the move. So they will handle quite a lot of chilly weather when you are moving. Um, the the nature of this fabric on all of them, Pile Pertex, is it does encourage airflow. So when your body does get hot when you're moving, it will retain that heat. Not so much when you stop though, so do have a belay jacket. Yeah, the second garment is the Montana Extreme Smock. This thing is a beast. Really thick, uh, you're not going to want to wear this um, if you're particularly active, if you're climbing or doing quite an intense hike. Quite simply because you get too hot. Um, it is a smock rather than jackets so that makes it warmer because there's no heat escaping down the central zone. Um, getting it on and off, like any smock over the head. Um, the zips here the side also come in handy as um, venting, dumping heat. 
um, they are two way so you can keep it fastened and access things you might have on the inside or just use them like pit zips to dump some heat that way um, we do have a couple of hand warmer pockets on this one um, which are quite nice, they're double lined uh, so you get a bit of extra insulation in the core uh, as well as being able to keep hand warm and we've got the kangaroo pocket in the front for dumping whatever you need to dump in uh, the hood is absolutely cavernous again it's helmet compatible it's oversized and there's a draw cord on top so you can fit it to your head one nice feature about um, these models is the face covering which is actually really really good it's probably one of the best face coverings of the hood that i've got because it's separate to the actual jacket and um, you can Get that to stick back with a couple of poppers to stop it flapping about in the wind uh, and the hood is completely detachable so you can wear it like a, a mountain shirt or one of the buffalo systems mountain shirts that you might have seen before if you didn't want the hood uh, if you're skiing or just doing any activity where the hood's going to get in the way you can just zip it straight up um, there are a couple of other little features on these models uh, things for tying your gloves onto if you didn't want to um, wear your wrists or you can take off your glove systems you have them dangling down um, so yeah really thick really beefy kind of smock for really extreme cold weather or activities where you're not going to be moving around too much and generating too much body heat okay and the last model we've got the Jotnar um, Asgir if that's how you pronounce it at least anyway this is a bit of a dark horse really um, it's very, very thin. It's actually got Holotrek Alpha inside, which if you're not familiar with this, um, it was originally developed for the, the armed forces. It's very, very fast drying, super, super high wicking. Um, and it doesn't look like very much at all. It's a bit like the old uh, string vests. Very, very thin. And it's got um, tiny little tufts of uh, pile. Um, because of this, it can actually handle a lot of moisture. So this is designed for when you're going to be working really, really hard at these kind of things. Um, other companies do do a similar model. Um, I know the Mountain Equipment, I think it's the Kinesis jacket, the new model, is essentially their version of this. So most of the main brands will have quite a thin um, Pile Pertex style jacket. Uh, vaporize, uh, rag vaporize stuff. They have a thinner version of the guide, which I showed you before. Um, the out material, mega quick drying on this kind of stuff. It's a very, very lightweight garment. Um, what you gain in saving weight, you do lose in some durability. Um, just having the, the ice axis do some dry tooling a few weeks ago, I did manage to put two holes in this. Um, I didn't realise I'd done it until I actually got home. Um, fairly simple to repair, um, but the durability on uh, really, really lightweight garments is probably something of, a, of an issue. So if you are going to do something with axes, crampons, etc., you might want to think about a shell to go over this uh, when you're in that situation. Uh, Temperature-wise, I mean, here in Almaty it's probably about minus six at the moment. I'm not moving around. I am quite comfortable in this, uh, in this garment with just a thin t-shirt on underneath. So it is reasonably insulating for what it is. I mean, because of the pull with track alpha and um, it's a lot of space between the fibers it does generate a lot of airflow so it does keep you surprisingly warm for the weight and thickness of the garment um, the hood not helmet compatible at all although the polar track alpha does run throughout the hood so it is nice and warm not designed to go under your helmet um, one thing to be aware of um, with hoods if you're thinking about these things is the hood design this one doesn't come down very far it's not designed to be your kind of outer, protect you from all weathers sort of hood. It's very much just an extra insulation layer. So if this is your, your main garment, make sure you've got a hat or something, because that's not going to give your face much protection at all. Other features, it's really basic. It's got two quite small, actually, pockets. They won't take a, an OS map. Um, that may or may not be a deal break for some of you. Pockets are double lined, so they, they do function quite well as hand warmer pockets. You can just about get your hands in there. So with any Pile Pertex jacket, it is designed to be worn all day. Most of the ones that you'll come across don't pack down very well. They're not an item that you're going to be taking it on and off. Leave it on all day, it'll dry out. Like I said before, that does mean that when you come to stop, you might feel a bit chilly because the garment might be a little bit on the wet side. The answer to that, and when you're around camp, don't switch it out. Just put a nice big fat belay jacket, downy jacket, synthetic insulation, 
over the top. If you have a sensible bit of insulation over the top, it will still dry out underneath. So with any of these Palpertex style garments, it's really important that you consider how hard you're going to be working as well as how cold it's going to be. My advice would be to get a relatively thin one. You can always layer other fleecy things underneath and they work in exactly the same way. So if you have a, a Polartrek thin fleece underneath your Palpertex garment, it's still going to wick the sweat away. So you don't need the big thick all-in-ones, particularly not in the UK. If you're going to be doing something where you're not going to be that active, but want something like this that's going to dry out, something that you can leave on all day, vent, etc, etc, then one of the thicker ones might be the way forward for you. Hope you find this useful. Give us a like and maybe subscribe down at the bottom. I'll put a link to all of the garments that I've talked about, as well as a few other um, potential suggestions for you to have a look at uh, in the comment section below.